Hey, hello everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And this is the question of the day. Are we on the globe or are we not on the globe? This is part one coming to our senses. So, um, as I said before, I decided one day to stop believing what other people tells me blindly and to use my five senses, the trivium and the quadrivium, to come to grasp with reality and to separate fact from fiction, from reality to non-reality. And as far as it goes in terms of the shape of the world, I decided to just go to zero on all board. Would it be for uh, proof for or against and just go systematically and find out what is real and what is not. So this is going to be the five sense test. And uh, I may not use all of those senses, but it's going to be the first, the, the beginning of coming to grasp with reality. So I do not believe anyone can come to a definite conclusion using only the five senses, but it's a really good place to start our investigation. Uh, we use our senses to gather data, grammar, about the world we live in. Most of the time, they're amazing at per perceiving reality, but sometimes our senses come across something weird that requires more knowledge to fully understand it. Uh, logic tells us that there's no contradiction in nature. Okay, this is really important. So we must go back to gather more data in order to come to a greater understanding. Now, here's an example. For example, my, my eye sight is seeing a, a pencil bent in water. Now, this is true that I, I see a pencil being bent in water, but the water is not bending the pencil. It's only creating a, a optical illusion because of the property of light and water playing together. So it's a paradox. Up until the moment someone goes back and to gather more data in order to come to better understanding of what's going on. So sometimes our senses uh, are not enough to come to understand the world around us, but it's a good place to start. So what do we know about the globe and does it match with our everyday experience of the world? So I went out there and did my grammar and looked up at, okay, so what do we know about the globe? Uh, what are the some of the the characteristic of the globe and all of the uh, links to where I got this information is right down below this video so you can check my facts, check my numbers, maybe I'm wrong, you point out in my, the comment section if I've got a wrong number. So we have the speed at the equator, about a thousand miles per hour, we have the circumference of uh, the equator at 40,000 kilometer. 40,000 kilometer, and we have the speed around the sun of 67,000 miles per hour, which is real fast. And then our solar system is just, you know, just going <laughs> with like 560,000 miles per hour, which is pretty damn fast, if you ask me. So, uh, and I also calculated what was the speed of rotation uh, where I live at the 45th parallel which is about 720 miles per hour. So one thing we can be sure about this model is that there's a lot of spinning, okay? A lot of it, and it go fast. Now, this is just a five census test, so bear with me. But right now, just stop for a second, look around you, and feel what your body, if you feel like you're just moving. I don't. That's just my perception of my body. Um, I don't feel anything around me moving or shifting or picking up air or wind that tells me that I'm moving at 720 miles per hour right now. Okay, now let's look at the sky. And this is a really cool... Um, time-lapse that I found and check this out this is just gorgeous so is it us that's moving or is it the sky that is moving 
It's a good question. It's tough to tell, right? Your eyes is just wondering which one is moving. But check out what's going to happen. That's right. So that was a pretty rad video. Um, I highly suggest you look it up. It's also going to be in the comment section. You can go check it out. It's beautiful. I love those videos. So what our senses are telling us is that we're not spinning. And the skies and star moves above us into, um, it keeps on repeating. It doesn't change that much year after year or any at all. So that means even though we have all of that spinning going on, um, nothing changed in the sky, not like after year, year after year. And we do not feel the difference in speed when we're traveling north or south. So that's the point I'm going to bring because I was a flight attendant. And this is the thing that I cannot wrap my head around and I will need your help to understand why is this? Because I used to do round trip because I was a flight attendant doing round trip Montreal Cancun in the same day. So in the morning I would go and come back 10 at night Montreal Cancun. And you can see here this really cool graphic. There's also um, the link to the creator of this, uh, this graphic in the comment section. And you can see the different speed. I'm about at almost 750 miles per hour and in Cancun it's closer to a thousand miles per hour. Now even though according to the GLOW model I was experiencing speed differential on the ground of about 402 kilometers per hour or 250 miles per hour twice a day I never felt dizzy once. I never felt like there was something weird or changed about the, the ground I stood on. Um, this the ground was as stable and and similar to what I was experiencing before. The sky wasn't moving faster. It was very similar except for the temperature. So that makes me raise an eyebrows. Um, now, this may be a case of pencil bending the water, and it may be a paradox that I, my limited understanding, my limited knowledge uh, can explain, but there's only two explanations. First is maybe the flight time accommodate me to the change of speed, or the earth is not spinning at all. So it's either my senses kind of um, not being on par with what's going on, or we're not moving. Now, I went on, on the internet and looked up at why, you know, ask NASA and academia, and you can see the link where you can find the information. Why is it that we do not feel the Earth moving? Well, according to them, we're not feeling the movement because we're moving along with it. So we're stick to it. And since the constant speed, um, just like in a car or a plane, we do not feel the speed going on. Okay, but that doesn't explain my flight attendant experience or anyone that travels a lot in planes. Uh, if someone goes from Alaska to the equator, that's a huge difference in speed. Uh, yet, I don't recall anyone uh, falling off the plane all dizzy and wondering what's going on. Um, would it be different if we teleported ourselves instantly like, if, you, if, you, if I could just teleport myself from Montreal to Cancun in just uh, in a second, would I feel dizzy? Well, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. It smells fishy. So, for my scorecard, I would put this one. It doesn't prove the globe. It doesn't disprove it. Uh, it may be because of my lack of knowledge. Who knows? But I would say it points towards proof that it's not spinning. But hey, we'll see. So what do you think? 
Would we feel difference in speed in our body if we could instantly teleport from Alaska to the equator? You tell me. Thank you so much for listening. Subscribe to this channel and I'm looking forward to create another video and I'll see you soon.